Hey guys, today we're going to talk about working at a tackle shop. For those of you who don't know, I worked at one for a year. Actually, probably like a year and a half. And I kind of wanted to go over basically how awesome it is. I mean, really it is a dream job for a fisherman. Working in a tackle shop, seeing new baits, talking with reps, talking with customers about fishing all day. It doesn't get better. All right, the first thing that I saw was that that's my dog just quit clacking around all right so the first thing that i saw was everybody makes something right so i would have people come in with baits and now the furnace is gonna go on. all right so the first thing is you can make money with the stuff you make if my dog would stop click clacking her nails. First things first, you can make money with the stuff that you're making right now. So if you're at home making baits and rods and stuff like that, you can sell them. That's where these local tackle shops shine versus some of the big box stores. You can take your stuff into the store, show the owner or whoever's running the place at the time, and maybe they might carry it, maybe they won't. Sometimes they'll do consignment, but you do have the opportunity to take your wares into the shop. Now I've seen some good stuff and I've seen some bad stuff. Just my advice, make sure that your stuff's quality, super high quality. Make sure your stuff's not stuff that's like already out there and like so much different varieties by other companies. And usually some of the bigger companies are gonna outrun you anyway. So don't make stuff that's already out there, you know, painting your jerk baits and painting your plugs. And I mean, everybody does that. So unless you already have a following with something else, people probably aren't going to buy that stuff. Just my opinion. Anyway, the second thing I learned from working at a local tackle shop is that a majority, and I mean like a large majority, like 90% of the people that come into a fishing store are just like me and you. We just go out on the weekends or whenever we can we try and catch as many fish as we can. We're proud about the one pounders. We're proud about the five pounders. Um, but not everybody's on big fish all the time and not everybody can get out there all the time. And I think that a lot of people are really embarrassed to ask for help uh, because they're being judged from the people that, you know, maybe are a little bit better than they are. Um, and we see it all the time, right? On social media, um, you make a post, right? And somebody's like, hey, where'd you catch it? Would you use? And the first thing people are like, uh, in the lake with a bait. It, that's cool. But like for a guy like me who, who maybe doesn't know where to catch these fish, just given like a generalized idea, you know, on a shoal or the bottom of a shoal. Uh, you know, on Lake Simcoe at the bottom of a shoal, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with giving that type of information. And I'll be honest with you, if I didn't work at the tackle shop, there's a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have learned. Uh, I wouldn't have met the people that I met and I wouldn't have gotten the information that I got. I think that I've made leaps and bounds from where I was or where I would have been if it was still just me watching YouTube videos, trying to, trying to source this stuff out. So I guess, you know, the big advice that I have isn't necessarily, uh, something related to a tackle shop. It's more of just, in my opinion, uh, fisherman ethics. Um, and, and I kind of generally am a little bit separated from, I guess, a majority of the people that are out there given information who won't give you spots, uh, who won't tell you what they've used. I'll give you spots. Uh, I may not give you those exact spots, you know, for an example, in my video with Tom, I'm not going to tell you where he took me to go fishing. If somebody gives me their own personal spot, I'm not going to tell you where that personal spot is, but I will tell you that we're fishing hard structure on Lake Simcoe uh, or on a shoal or a break off. Um, you know, some of my whitefish videos, I showed you exactly where I was fishing. Those were community holes, so it's not a big deal. Um, but I showed you where on those community holes I was fishing uh, and I was at least seeing fish, catching fish. I don't remember if that video was good or not. Most of my videos aren't. Um, so yeah, just ethics, right? Be cool. Be be a helpful person. Um, don't don't just give crap answers like in the lake. I could probably go on for a while on this because I'm pretty passionate about it, as you can tell. Just be a nice person and help new people out. They're not going to continue fishing 
if they're not catching fish. And a lot of guys don't have the time to go out and spend eight hours on the lake trying to find where these fish are. Give them a starting spot. At least that's an area where they can start out and move on. I just keep going with this, don't I? All right, let's, let's move on to the next thing. This is the next one. I don't even know. I had it crossed out. Uh, I think I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, if you are good at fishing, people are going to talk smack about you. Um, and the better you are, the more smack they talk. Or if you've popularized something that somebody else started and maybe it wasn't very popular, boy, are you going to get it. <laughs> so, you know, I guess the big thing here is for me anyway, and it's something I, I keep putting in my head because every once in a while I'll get one of these comments, you know, on my, on my YouTube page or my Facebook page or whatever, and it's just some guy being a jerk, you know, going back to that spot where I posted my exact spot where I was catching whitefish. Uh, the comment has been deleted, which was funny uh, because my response was exactly what I would tell you guys right here. Um, he came out and was, good job sharing your spots. Now you're going to go back there and there's going to be 30 huts on it. There's 30 huts everywhere on Lake Simcoe. It's a community spot anyway. Talking smack. Um, and I'm not talking about the, the people that work in the tackle shop and the owners and stuff like that. Um, I like to think that those guys are pretty open um, and everybody's a customer right so it doesn't matter who you are what you're fishing who your enemies are uh who your friends are um when you come to the tackle shop i think everybody's treated fairly or at least that's how i saw it and that's how i try and treat everybody too um if you got your own thing that's cool uh no judgment and uh and and i do get it i i do get that there's some people out there that are kind of shady but if you are if you are big you're getting big uh, people talk smack about you. So uh, for my advice for that was just if you are doing, say, a YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you're doing, people are going to talk smack. Just let it slide. Let it slide. Number four, this is going to be a little bit controversial, uh, especially if there's people out there that are kind of selling stuff, um, you know, whether it be online or in their own store or at shows or whatever. Uh, but for me, from what I've seen, uh, in the math that I've done in my head, uh, sometimes local taco shops aren't making a ton of money. Now I worked in one that was relatively lucky. He covered a lot of stuff. He did hunting and fishing and, uh, summertime outdoors and boating. And so, I mean, he, he had a lot of stuff covered, uh, but if you talk about smaller taco shops, you know, there's lulls. Uh, big lulls too, you know, like in that springtime where, you know, there's no ice, but nothing season wise is open or the water's too cold or whatever. Uh, really, people aren't fishing, so they're not really buying a lot. You'll have people come in and, and browse and stuff, but uh, usually it's not overwhelming. And same within the fall. In the fall, you know, between that time of, you know, crap, I got to get my boat out of the water because uh, it's too cold to do any boating versus, you know, the ice is on the lake and we can fish. It starts to get a little bit slow in there. Um, and sometimes you can make up with it, make up with it, make up for it when you're doing things like, you know, uh, flyers uh, to get a lot of traffic in the store or if a new product comes out uh, and you're kind of the only one in that area that has that product, you might do well until other people start to catch up and the furnace is going to go on. So we got to pause for a second. I just realized that I wore this shirt the last time I did a video. I swear, I don't wear the same shirt all the time, every day. All right, we're back. So where was I? I think we we're talking about how they don't possibly make a, a lot of money. Not saying that they don't, because I'm sure that some do. Uh, but... Take those slow times and kind of do the math, right? So like where I work, for an example, there's 15 people that work there. Uh, minimum wage, I don't remember what that is now. Uh, that's my dog making noise. And you do that for like, what is it? That's like, I don't know. Probably if I did my math correctly, and I don't remember how I did my math. If I did my math correctly, I think you're looking at about like, possibly up to $50,000 lost just in employees over, let's say, a couple of months. Um, so when it comes down to doing those shows, you know, 
that's the place to make money, which is, I think, why you don't see a lot of um, discounts uh, going into those shows. Um, so I really think this is the time for smaller guys to get in there, uh, give those huge discounts, right? Because we're backed by a job. Um, so I think that uh, I think that the more little guys get in there, and I really do feel like things are starting to turn towards the little guys. Uh, versus maybe the medium guys like the small tackle shops you guys have. And then, of course, the big box stores. But I'm renting. Uh, so number four is don't think that, uh, you know, those guys are trying to just ram money out of you because sometimes they don't make a ton uh, in the long term. Number five, local tackle shops. And I'm not talking about big box stores here, but I'm talking local tackle shops, I think, are where you're going to find some of the most information, especially if you're a newcomer, right? So the guys working at the local tackle shops are definitely in there just because they enjoy fishing. They wanna be in there, they wanna see the new baits, they wanna to talk to the customers. And the cool part about local tackle shops is they are very customer oriented. Um, if you wanna see new baits come in, they will likely take that information and take it to their boss. Um, most of these guys are looking up their own baits anyway and trying to suggest things to the boss to bring in. Uh, you know, I know I did that a couple of times. Um, and, uh, and I think that these guys are out there every day, you know, trying to catch fish. And I'm not saying that the guys at the big box store aren't doing that. But from what I've heard, uh, you don't really get the same input uh, as an employee to your boss that you would at a local tackle shop. You know, uh, big box stores usually have already been told what they're selling, how much they're selling it, and what the stock layout is going to be for that year when they're turning stuff around. You know, it's it's not like the local tackle shop where, uh, you know, he's trying to cover as much as he can base-wise, including some of the hard-to-find stuff, you know, that you can't get everywhere. Uh, especially at the big box stores, right? Because the big box stores are big brand names too, right? So you're going to see the big, you know, Lunker Hunts and, and Strike Kings and all the big brand names are definitely going to be at the big box stores. But some of those smaller brand names, they're going to start in those local tackle shops. Meigs Lures is one of them, right? I mean, that one is just a local tackle shop. This year, of course, he's blown up. He's in Canadian Tire and I think he might even be in Cabela's. I'm not sure. But he started out very, very small. Uh, at local taco shops again going back to the first option there you know that's a good place to start making your brand right um, the only thing I would add to that is you know don't leave it up to the taco shops to sell your stuff it's up to you to sell your stuff if it doesn't work it doesn't work so get out prove it works get other people to use it and, and start selling it at the local taco shop so yeah number five is just you know educated people um, and that's kind of a, a sore spot for me because when you talk to, say, an educated person, uh, or I don't want to even want to say educated, I just want to say skilled, you know, uh, as an IT guy, I know that if you aren't skilled in that field, you're either not going to get the job or you're not going to get paid very well. Um, so having somebody in the fishing industry um, that is good at fishing, spends every day out there learning new stuff, suggests products and stuff like that. Uh, you know, just realize those guys are there because they want to be there. It's not because of the pay. <laughs> I don't know if I should have said that. And you know what? One more thing. I'm going to give you one more thing because this is the main reason why you don't want to work in a toggle shop. And that is we get to see cool stuff before you. We get to see the reps come in with the stuff that's not even on the shelves in Canada yet. We get to talk to people who are selling uh, their own products. Uh, that's medium, uh, so low, medium, and, and high level people uh, in the fishing industry selling their stuff. Uh, we get to play with it. We get to touch it. We get to, you know, just, mm, it's so much fun. Uh, the best thing was, you know, the Hummingbird rep coming in. I think he came in once a month. And you got to see everything that's coming out the next year. All the products. You're not going to get that anywhere else. Anyway, that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching, listening, whatever you're doing here. Uh, subscribe if you like it. Give me a comment. If you have any suggestions or you want to talk about stuff even more, email me, info at areallyfishing.com, and I will talk about it on the next podcast, webcast, whatever you want to call this thing. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.